Hello, I'm Brian Farrell, and welcome to Pace IT's session on Basic Operating System Security Settings Part 2. Today we're going to be talking about shared files and folders, system files and folders, and then user authentication. And with that, let's go ahead and begin this session. Let's begin by talking about shared files and folders. When we start talking about shared files and folders, the first thing we need to be made aware of is that there are administrative shares and there are local shares. Administrative shares are a set of default hidden shares that are only available to administrators. These shares cannot be deleted, but they can be disabled, which is the default in the modern operating system. An administrative share can be identified by the dollar sign in its name. As a rule, these shares create access to the most important or vulnerable resources on a system, like the volumes root or operating system files. Local shares, on the other hand, are shares that are created and can be made available to anyone. Now let's discuss folder and file relationships. The folder and file structure involves a parent to child relationship. The folder that holds a file is the parent folder. The file that is held is the child of the parent. Two files that are within the same folder are siblings. And folders can also have a parent folder and be a child of that folder. Now permissions that are granted to the parent folder are by default inherited by the children. The children's permission can be modified, but it has to be explicitly done. You need to use care and caution because it is easy to propagate the wrong permissions by making a change to the parent folder. Now let's talk about system files and folders. System files and folders contain the operating system and other files that are necessary for the system to function correctly. By default, these files and folders are hidden and protected. This default option can be changed by the folder's option applet located in the control panel. Once they are unhidden, an administrator can change the protection level of these system files and folders. That should be done with caution as changes made to these files and folders can cause security issues or other problems. Now we move on to user authentication. User authentication is proving who you are. Authentication is not authorization, by the way. Once you prove who you are, you are then authorized to perform action, but you have to prove who you are first. Now, there are three main ways of authentication. The first one is what you know, which is the most common and the one that we're most used to. This is the use of usernames and passwords. You know those. The next method is what you are. That would be biometric authentication. Uh, fingerprint scanners, retinal patterns, voice recognition, so on and so forth. Those are all authentication by what you are. The last method is what you have. That would be a, like a security token, which uses a rolling code logarithm to supply a secure code. Now you can combine different forms of, a, of authentication. This is called multi-factor authentication, and it's much more secure than single factor authentication you may want to consider implementing a single sign-on procedure for your organization. What this does is it uses an authentication server to authenticate users. It allows the user to sign on once to get access to multiple network resources instead of requiring them to sign on for each resource. If you're running a work group, you can't do single sign-on. At the minimum, it can only occur at the domain level. Now that concludes this session on Basic Operating System Security Settings Part 2. We covered shared files and folders. We covered system files and folders. 
and we discussed user authentication. Now on behalf of Pace IT, thank you for watching this session and I look forward to doing more.